Let's talk about shell expansions, which is a concept that is prevalent in working at a bash shell, but is not very familiar if you're coming from a general purpose programming language. So the idea is we're going to be able to give a command such as echo, and then maybe a single word like hello, uh, and then maybe uh, a string that has a variable name uh, access in it that would be, let's say, name. And the idea of shell expansion is this, right? So when the command is given, the first thing that's going to happen is the interpreter is going to break this into tokens, right? So this would be a token, this would be a token, and this whole string would wind up being a token. So we've got a double quoted string value that would be a, a single token, even if, and let's actually make this a little bit more uh, interesting, even if I had some spaces here and maybe some exclamation points after that space, right? So that would be a single token, right? And then what's gonna happen is step number two is each token is expanded. Right? And so the idea of expansion is here we have just a, a very basic ordinary string and nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna be the same as what it was before. Same with hello, right? Just an ordinary string, nothing's gonna be expanded. This string, however, has an, a what we call a parameter expansion in it, and, and, or we can think of this as a variable expansion. So let's imagine that um, above this in code, we had previously given a command like assign the variable name to be uh, Chris, right? And so what happens during the variable expansion step is we would say, okay, let's substitute or expand this special construct to be replaced with that variable's contents and then uh, whatever followed. And then the last step, uh, or actually before we get to the, this command being interpreted, the other part that happens here is that the quotes are gonna be removed. So these quotes that we had written out would actually be removed, but this would still be a single unit, right? So this would be one unit, uh, hello would be another unit. And so we've got three things that are being processed here, uh, or three strings that are being processed, I could say. Uh, echo, hello, and then this string value here, but none of those would have quotes before they get passed into the actual command that interprets what this is, right? So when the echo program runs, uh, the contents of its uh, first argument would be hello, and second would be Chris, followed by a space, followed by exclamation point, and those would be a string or textual values, right? So the idea here is there are actually some other expansions that we'll learn about, and what's interesting is that these happen, this expansion occurs before the program runs, right? So this echo program does not know anything about the idea of this, this variable reference inside of this string value. No, it was the shell's job to expand that string and, and carry out whatever substitution was needed in order for echo to then be given exact string values with those variables pre-populated, right? So this expansion occurs before any programs or functions or whatever it is that you're using this expansion in uh, gets evaluated, right? So let's take a look at some other types of expansions. The first one, which was alluded to before, is file named globbing. This is very, a very commonly used and powerful expansion. We'll look at brace expansion and then command substitution. There are, of course, many more details here that uh, you can find and learn more about in the Bash manual, but these are, I think, the most important to have a sense of how they work. So the first one is file name globbing. And the idea is when you have an unquoted path, so in this case, you don't want to, you can't use file name globbing inside of a, a quoted string. So when you have an unquoted path, uh, you can use some special matching characters and the most commonly used is the asterisk, which says, hey, match uh, any number of characters, uh, but don't match the directory separator, right? So for example here, if we said echo uh, sla slash bin slash and then star uh, grep, we would match any program whose name in the bin directory began with uh, uh, with any string of characters, and then was ended or had a suffix of grep, right? Additionally, if we wanted to find names of characters, or sorry, names of programs with three characters, the question mark in file name globbing will expand to 
match any single character. So we can try uh, these examples out real quick. Right? So I'm going to say uh, ls slash bin slash asterisk grep. And notice that uh, there are a number of programs in the bin directory that begin with any string of characters and end with the word grep. And so the asterisk is matching multiple characters there. And the second example was ls slash bin and then any three letter command. So notice that cat, dir, pwd, uh, sed, and tar are all three letter program names. And these, what's important to understand here is this will work with echo as well. So ls, uh, I don't want to confuse what's happening here because the LS program might have been doing something more interesting, but to prove to ourselves that remember Echo, all it does is it, it, it prints back out to standard output what we give it as the input arguments. So if I were to say slash bin, question mark, question mark, question mark, notice that we're getting a very similar output. And here, the list of arguments that Echo received, right? So the list of things that Echo received are uh, these strings. To hopefully make this even more evident, in the previous video, we defined a function named print all, right? And if you wanted to go ahead and just uh, redeclare this function, you could by uh, writing it out all in one line. And again, we're using the semicolon to, to mark the end of statements. So this print all function loops through each argument that is uh, passed into this function as an argument, right? So remember, this is a special variable that says the list of all arguments and we're going to echo each of those arguments on their own line, right? So now if I were to say print all and then slash bin and then question mark, question mark, question mark, notice that for this to have worked, that expansion, what happened was uh, at shell expansion time, there are two tokens here, right? So this is the first token and this is the second token. And we expanded this, it turns out there's nothing needed to be expanded here. There are no variable references or anything like that. Uh, but this did include these file globbing characters, so the three question marks, or the asterisk also will result in this. And that's going to actually expand into more than one string. So this single input string actually expanded into slash bin, slash cat, slash bin, slash dir, and you get the point, right? So it's as if we had written the command print all followed by all of the names of the files in that directory that matched this particular uh, globbing expansion, right? So that's a very powerful tool in conjunction with the ability to write loops and scripts and also the ability to write, uh, to give commands that operate on multiple files, right? So for example, uh, if I had wanted to use the cat program to read all of the markdown files in this directory out, I could say cat star.md, right? And so this globbing pattern would say uh, expand into, into what? Well, it would expand into the word cat as the first uh, value. And then this would expand to demo.md followed by hellovim.md. And it would be like us as the operators of this script, or if we had this line in, in, in some shell script, uh, when we type this, it's as if we are typing this command here. These expansions are evaluated before this cat program will run. And so when the cat program actually is run, it will have these two inputs as a part of it. Right. So when I do that, we see that the output is there and that would have been the same output as if I had written cat demo.md and cat hello vim.md. Great. So globbing is a very powerful mechanism when you're trying to write scripts that operate over uh, a list of files that match some, some uh, pattern. And often this will be files that are of a certain type, like all of my C files or all of my markdown files, things like that. So as I just mentioned, one pattern string expands to many matched path strings. So this is an example where you start with one input and it actually, the expansion uh, results in multiple string inputs that are going to be passed off to the command that gets run in Vim. 
right? The next expansion I want to talk about are braced lists, and this is a is has some relationship to the other uh, to the previous example of globbing. But the idea is when we have curly braces surrounding a list of comma separated strings, that will expand to n separate strings. So let's actually rather than think of this formally, we'll come back to that. Let's think of this as an example. So if I echo uh, one, two, three. You'll notice that we have, it's as if echo was past those three things individually, or if I were to use the, uh, the function we defined previously, which was print all, right? So if I use the print all function, one, two, three, notice that expands to three different inputs, right? Or three arguments. Now you might be thinking, well, what's useful about that? Why would I ever use this? Well, imagine that we have uh, some longer path here. And then there's three files in that path that we want to address, right? When we use this expansion, it takes whatever prefix, and we could also have a suffix here if we wanted. So here's a suffix example. And where it finds those braced uh, words, it's going to take each of them and, and produce or uh, expand to an individual string for each of those values, right? So here we see that uh, some longer path one, two, three expands to these three values. And there are some common use cases for this. For example, uh, if I look in my, say, uh, wiki directory, and notice I have this uh, file named index.wiki. Let's say I wanted to rename that file. So I would say move wiki slash and the current name is index.wiki. And let's say that I wanted the new name to be, say, uh, uh, rename demo, right? And then .wiki is the suffix. So when I carried out that command, right, this expanded to move, right? So move followed by uh, there are two strings generated here. So the first string generated would have been wiki slash index dot wiki. And notice that's the uh, name of the file that we started from. So remember move is going to say, take some current path and move it so that uh, it gets, the, its path is moved to some other path, right? And so the other path that it gets moved to is wiki slash rename demo without these, this curly brace expansion, this would have been the complete command we needed to run, right? And there's some redundancy here. And so one use case of this uh, curly brace expansion is a simple move. Uh, another one that's commonly used is if you wanna make a directory structure, like say uh, I wanted to uh, make a directory structure for a new project, and I wanted to say something like make dir uh, and I'm going to use the P flag here to, to make any parent directories necessary. So we'll recursively make directories here and let's say project demo slash, uh, and here I've got a source directory, a bin directory and an include directory, for example, and that would have expanded to make dir dash P and then three separate arguments as input such that. Uh, if I were to now look at, well, okay, what's in my project demo directory, we, we created each of those three directories as their individual uh, freestanding arguments because we used this expansion, right? So this is a, a common cool expansion uh, that you'll use when working with the file system and there's some shared path that you wanna repeat some uh, uh, operation on just like we saw here. The last thing I want to just demonstrate here, which I've never had a real use for, but uh, just brings us conceptually uh, full circle, is if I use the print all again, and I say like something like A, B, C, and slash D, E, F. So notice we're using two uh, sets of curly braces. This will go through and permute all expansions, right, uh, of both combinations here. And if you have a good use for this, let me know. I think it's conceptually pretty cool, but I've, I've never actually needed to use that uh, in a real life environment.
right? So some of those examples that I mentioned before, moving a file or renaming a file using some uh, old name and new name such that you don't have to retype out the path that it is at is, is really handy. Uh, when you wanna make subdirectories of a project, that's also a commonly used uh, use case for this braced list expansion. The last one I wanna talk about in this video is command substitution. Right? So with command substitution, one of the things we can do is actually run some other command and substitute its output wherever we ran that command in some other string, right? So we can use this and that we'll see that this starts with the dollar symbol just like a variable access, but rather than curly braces, we're gonna use parentheses to say this is uh, effectively a subcommand or we're using this as command substitution. And whatever the output of this command is, it's going to be substituted in where it was used, okay? So for example, there's a command that's named who am I that will tell us what the username of our current user is Okay, so let's go try out command substitution. So there's a command named date, for example, that uh, prints out the current date of our system. And if I were to say uh, echo uh, the current date is, and then I'm going to use command substitution here to actually run that command uh, in place of that, whatever its output is gets substituted there. And so you can see that is what happened. Uh, we can do things like uh, echo or let's do print all and then uh, I can use command substitution for the output of ls and notice that all of the uh, strings that were a part of this ls command were passed to our print all function as arguments and so this expanded to uh, each of these. We can uh, try something like echo uh, and then a command such as who am I, which would tell us the current user of some system. And we're currently working in a Docker session where we're the root user, uh, which is like the super admin of a given system. And so that just told us that we're, we're the root user. And notice that we can run any command that we want here and its output, whatever is sent to standard output gets substituted in that string.